Hey, how's it going everyone? This is I Am Air. I wanted to put together a quick video that'll teach you how to solve a common problem new game developers run into for managing a sprite's orientation based on whether or not they're moving right or left. On the surface, this problem looks like it's pretty easy to solve, and there's a lot of different ways in which game designers go about managing this, but the solution I'm about to provide will make sure that the character is facing the right direction whether or not they're moving, while also taking into account if the player is instantiated into the scene facing left or right. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. For the solution, I have a very simple scene. The scene contains the main camera with all the default settings, as well as a platform game object that simply contains a sprite render component with the image of a square, as well as a box collider 2D component with all the default settings. And then I have this player square game object that also contains a sprite render component with the image of a square, a box collider 2D component that has all the default settings, as well as a rigid body 2D component, with the only change to it being under the constraints tab and freezing the Z rotation. And then finally we have a character script as well as a horizontal movement script. And you can download both of these scripts from my GitHub page. There's a link in the description for this video. But both of these scripts are used in another tutorial video that I uploaded to YouTube already. And if you're brand new to game development, I would recommend watching that video as well as it covers jump mechanics. And a lot of the information in the character script is going to be tied to that jump script that we're not going to be using at all within this video. However, this solution and flipping the sprite based on the player direction doesn't require a jump solution, so I omitted that script from this video. Both of these scripts are more or less the same scripts from that video, which will contain some new additional logic that I'll go over in this video to handle flipping the character when we change directions. One last thing about the player square game object is it does contain two children game objects and both only have sprite render components with images of circles for eyes. And the only reason we have these child game objects is so we have a visual representation of what direction the player is facing. Go ahead and pause the video here if you need some time to download the scripts from the GitHub page. Or you can simply pause the video while I discuss the new changes to these scripts and type out the scripts yourself. Let's first take a look at the character script. There's three new variables that I added to this script from the previous solution that we had with the total jump solution video. The first one's going to be at the top of the variables list, and it's going to be a hide and inspector public bool variable named is facing left. This variable is going to be controlled by the horizontal movement script, and the character script will then feed the value to all the other scripts that inherit from the character script, so that any script that inherits from character will have a handy reference of what direction the player is actually facing. The other two new variables are located at the bottom of the variables list, and the first one's going to be a public bool variable named spawn facing left. And to be honest, I would never have this bool on a character script. I would typically put a bool like this on a level manager script that would handle instantiating the player, but that's outside of the scope for this video. And I definitely want to include a feature like this in the video because it is a part of the solution. And all you would need to do is remove the bool from this script and put it on a level manager type script and then have this character script have a reference to the level manager script that would check to see if a spawn facing left bool is true when the player is being instantiated. Next we have this private vector2 variable named facing left and this vector2 variable is going to contain the value of the x and y coordinates for local scale on the player to flip the player from facing right to facing left. So if we scroll down to the initialization method you can see we set up the value for facing left within the initialization, and facing left is going to contain the same exact local scale values for the player, with the only change being that the x value is now negative. After we set up the value for facing left, next we check to see if the spawn facing left bool is set to true, and if it is set to true, then we go ahead and change the player's local scale value to the facing left value, and then we also set the is facing left bool to true. Underneath the initialization method, we have this protected virtual void method for flip, and for the most part, this method is only going to be called by the horizontal movement script, and all it's doing is checking to see if the is facing left bool is true or false, and if the is facing left bool is true, then we go ahead and flip the player's transform.local scale to the facing left value, and this top if statement is going to be pretty easy for most game designers to understand, but it's this bottom if statement that initially tripped me up the most, and is probably pretty confusing to a lot of new game designers because the logic we have in this other if statement is basically saying to have the transform.localScale value equal the facing left value. Now because we're going to be managing both the is facing left bool and the flip method through the horizontal movement script, this if statement will make a lot more sense when we discuss the horizontal movement script and how it manages the is facing left bool as well as the flip method. So just understand that the flip method gets called by the horizontal movement script and the is facing left bool is set to false then all we want to do is go ahead and change the transform.localScale value to simply have a negative x transform.localScale value. So now let's take a look at the horizontal movement script. 
And with the foundation set up in the character script for managing the player direction, the new logic in the horizontal movement script is going to be pretty easy to set up. And all we need to do is expand what we currently have in the fixed update method. And we're going to add two new if statements to it. One if statement is going to check whether or not the player is moving right. And the other is going to check whether or not the player is moving left. And if the player is moving right, then that means that the value for horizontal input is going to be greater than zero. And if the player is moving left, then the value for horizontal input is going to be less than zero. And for both of these if statements, we're going to have another conditional check that will determine whether or not the character dot is facing left bool is true or false. And depending on what direction the player is moving, as well as the value of that character dot is facing left bool, then we'll go ahead and swap out the value for the character dot is facing left bool as well as run the flip method at that point. So let me give you an example of how these two if statements are going to work with each other. If the character is moving in a rightward direction, which means horizontal input is greater than zero, and the character dot is facing left bool is set to true, then we need to change the value of that character dot is facing left bool to false at this point, as well as run the flip method. And if you remember from the character script, if we're running the flip method and the is facing left bool is set to false, then it'll go ahead and set the transform.local scale value to the opposite x value at that point. Also, if the player is moving in a leftward direction, which again means horizontal input is less than zero, and the character dot is facing left bool is not set to true at this point, then we set the character dot is facing left bool to true. We run the flip method in the character script, and within the character script, if the is facing left bool is set to true and the flip method is being called, then at that time the transform.local scale value is going to equal the facing left value. And that's everything you need to know on how this solution works. We can go ahead and save these scripts, go back into Unity and test it out. I'm going to first test it out by having the player spawn facing right. And as you can see, once I start moving left, the player's sprite flips, and we can see that the sprite is now facing a leftward direction. If I now start moving right, the player's sprite flips again. Now let's test it out where we have the player spawn facing left. So I'm going to check off the box on the character component for spawn facing left. And now when I hit play, the character loads into the scene facing leftwards and can still flip accordingly as they need to. Now that we tested everything out and we know it works, that'll go ahead and wrap up this video. And now you should have your sprite based character facing the correct direction, depending on if the player is moving left or right. And this solution should actually cover all your bases and you shouldn't actually have to touch it again. But for certain animations, for example, if you have a wall sliding animation and you need to make sure that the character's back is always facing the wall as they slide down the wall, you may not need to expand or touch these methods ever again to have the player always facing the correct direction. Like I mentioned, that'll go ahead and wrap up this video. If I was able to teach you something, please consider liking the video, as well as if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please also consider subscribing, as I will only upload top-tier proven solutions within Unity. One quick thing I also want to add, if you're planning on making a Metroidvania-style game, consider taking a look at my course on Udemy that'll go over everything you need to know to code and design a Metroidvania-style game within Unity, and you can find a special discount to the course on my website with the link to my website in the description for this video. But that's enough self-promotion for one video. I definitely appreciate you watching this and hope to see you in my next video. Hope you all have a great rest of your day and take care.